I'm gonna show you guys how you can take an enemy like this one here and give them a health bar like this. The health bar updates as it takes damage and it will always be positioned over the enemy and facing towards the camera, which means this works in 2D as well as 3D. And the best part is you don't need any pre-made assets or anything like that. Everything works out of the box in Unity. So I have my project here and in my scene, I have my player and I have this red box, which is an enemy. We're gonna start in 2D, but again, this is gonna work for both. This enemy has a few components on it, but none of them are relevant to the tutorial at hand. The only thing that might be interesting is this enemy script has our health and max health stored on the enemy script. But otherwise this really just handles like how the enemy chases around, which I followed in previous tutorials. You don't need to do any of that. You just need a health and a max health. So the real difference between say a health bar above our enemy and a health bar that's on our player, that's on like the HUD, right? Is that we actually want this health bar to live in world space. And that's really easy to do. So you can make your health bar with images or whatever you like, but I actually like to use the slider UI component that comes with Unity. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna right click on my enemy here and I'm gonna go to UI and pick slider. I'll rename this to health bar. And you'll notice this also attached a canvas on our enemy game object. So let's go ahead and click our canvas and we'll change the render mode from screen space overlay to world space. And this is very important. And so what we can do on this canvas is right click rec transform and hit reset. And this will position it over our enemy. And you'll notice if we double click it, it's quite large right now. It's actually like way too large. And so you could actually just shrink in the sides if you want. Another thing you could do is go to the scale and the rec transform and just make each axis 0.01 or something like that. And so now it's actually, <laughs> funny enough, it's the perfect size of our rectangle. We can actually make it even smaller. It doesn't really matter. I'll just zero it out in the X and the Y position and then drag it above the player. So we have this canvas. The size doesn't really matter. It's just the positioning of it. There's no reason for it to be big. That's, that's why we're shrinking it down. And now we have this health bar slider that's attached to the canvas. It's being rendered in world space. And so the slider gives us things we don't need. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uncheck interactable because this is just gonna be a display. We don't wanna interact with it. And then we have this handle slide area that we can just delete entirely. And so now on our slider component, we can mess with this value and you'll see it's increasing and decreasing, right? The one issue we have is when our value is set to one, which is the maximum, this would be like a full health bar, it's not reaching all the way. So I'm just gonna click on fill area and then using our rect tool, drag this out until it reaches the end. And there you go. We now have a health bar that will go from zero all the way up to maximum. We can then expand fill area and click on fill. This is the actual image of the health. And I'll just make this like a light green or something just to understand what's going on. And that's it, that's all we really need. At this point you could like expand it out, like let's make it a little thicker in the Y axis. And there you go, we have a health bar above our enemy. Feel free to make it look however you want. This is just a very simple way using a UI component that Unity gives you out of the box. All right, so our health bar at this point is basically done stylistically. So let's go ahead and create a new C-sharp script and I'm gonna call this floating health bar. And for me, that's just gonna signify that we wanna use this in world space. And then I'll go ahead and attach it to our health bar that's attached to our enemy. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the start method and the first thing I wanna do is create a couple variables. The first one we're gonna make is a private slider and you'll see it's not actually gonna pop up. That's a slider joint 2D, which we don't want. This is just because we need to add a using unity engine.ui library at the top of our script. And so if we actually look in the inspector, we see that our health bar has a slider component and that's because we're using a unity slider, right? And the field we wanna access is actually called value. This is the value we wanna change that actually increases and decreases the display of the health bar. So if we were to say slider.value, you'll see that we actually can access this directly, which is great. So what we wanna do is make a public void update health bar method. And in terms of arguments, we really just need two float variables, one for current health and one for max health, or really what any values you wanna provide to this bar, it doesn't have to be health. So again, on my enemy script, I have a health and I have a max health. This is an area that's gonna be catered to your game however you have it set up. You do not have to follow my lead. And so I could enter something like an enemy script, right? And that way I could reference the health and max health, but this is actually not a great idea because then we are tying this floating health bar component directly to an enemy. And what if we wanted to use this above the player or above you know, some in-game objects or like anything else? So that's not usually a good idea. It's much better to just provide it with some generic float values. So what we can do is say float current value and float max value. And this way it's a little more generic. 
And just like before, all we really want to do is say slider.value is equal to the current value divided by the max value. That's it. And we actually don't even need to call this a floating health bar. It could be like a floating status bar used for stamina or mana or anything else in your game, right? But we'll just go with this for now. And where we actually want to call update health bar could be in our enemy script. That's where our health is, right? That's what we can provide to it. So I can make a reference to a health bar component or a floating health bar component, sorry. What I'm gonna do just for convenience is get the component in awake. So I'll say health bar is equal to get component in children and look for a floating health bar. And so down here in my enemy script, I have this take damage function where we provide a damage amount and then we reduce our health by that. Your game is probably going to be set up differently. Wherever this value of this bar is being adjusted, whether that's in a take damage function or anything else, you'll have to find that out and you'll have to have two float values to provide. For me, it's right here. And all I wanna say is health bar dot update health bar, which is the function we made and provide our health and our max health. So as long as we have a reference to this health bar, we can call this function and provide some values. It's that simple. It should be easy to adapt to your game. And so we're calling this in take damage, but we also could just call it up in start after we set our health, just so every time we restart the game, it refreshes as well. Last thing we have to do to test this out is on my health bar under the enemy, we require a slider. And so I could just do this like we did in awake to fetch it, but I'll just go ahead and drag the slider in. And because we're calling it in start, I could change this value for testing now. And when I hit play, we should see it fill right up, but you'll immediately notice that something's off here. Regardless, as we start to shoot our enemy, the health bar goes down, right? And then it disappears and dies. So it is working, but we need to solve for now the health bar not really staying in position and rotating with the enemy as it moves around. But don't worry, we can fix this really easily. Back in our health bar script, I'm gonna make two more variables. I'm gonna make a variable for a camera and I'm gonna make a variable for a transform. I'll call the transform target. So we have a camera variable and a target. Down here in update, really what we wanna do is set the rotation of this health bar to match the rotation of our camera. Because right now what's happening is I can click on this health bar and I can click on rotation and start changing it, right? And that's what's happening. The health bar is rotating with the enemy. But really what we wanna do is always have it the exact same rotation as the camera we have. In this case, it's main camera. And that way it'll always look straight on. And that's really easy to do. We can just say transform.rotation is equal to camera.transform.rotation. So I could go to our health bar and drag in our main camera. And so now at least the health bar is always facing towards the camera, right? It's not rotating anymore. That issue's fixed. The second problem now is we need the position to always be locked above the enemy. So we want it to be positioned like here. Again, on our health bar, we have this empty target variable for a transform. We can just click and drag our enemy into it. And from here, what we can do is actually get the target.position, right? Which is the enemy position. And so if I set the transform.position is equal to the target.position, it should be close. But really, we're just going to be set into the middle of the enemy all the time, which maybe this is what you want if you have a top-down game. But if you wanted it to be, say, positioned above the enemy or always offset, by a certain amount. Well, then it's really easy. What we could do is make a serialized field of a private vector three, and I'll call this offset. And now in our component, you'll see we can actually put in a value. So I'm just gonna add one to the Y value and leave zero and X and zero and Z. And going back to our script, we just wanna say transform position is equal to the target position plus offset. And this way we can actually configure where this health bar is going to be. But now when we play, we have an offset of one in the Y axis. We can see that regardless of where our enemy moves or how he rotates, it's always gonna be positioned in the same exact spot. And for me, this is what I wanted, so we are done. And as promised in a 3D environment, it's the exact same thing. The health bar will always look towards us and it will always be positioned based on the offset you create. So you can play around with that offset in your game to get it perfectly where you want it. That's it for the tutorial. I hope this helped you out. Leave a like if it did, and I'll see you guys in the next one.